Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and happy holiday. Today is the National Day holiday of Spain, October the 12th. So I'm taking one day off without class and doing this lovely video for you guys. So many of you guys asked me if I have any study suggestions, tips, resources for Spanish beginners. After one week of research, here I am. I've got everything worked out in my note. No matter you are just thinking about, maybe you want to study Spanish at home by yourself. Or if you have studied for several weeks or months, but you are constantly looking for new materials to improve your Spanish, this video has got everything covered. And most importantly, all the resources here. Now I think 90% of the resources here that I have are totally free. So I break down the resources in five parts that I think are the most important for beginners. I didn't include speaking or writing here because I really think that in the beginning, all you need to do is to have as much input as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so number one, pronunciation. So this part I prepared for people who are just starting out or people who haven't even started yet. So if you haven't started, of course, you'll have to learn the alphabet. And I will recommend a Spanish YouTube channel for you guys. It's called Butterfly Spanish. Actually, I think this is quite popular, but after going through a lot of videos online, I think that she teaches pronunciation the best because there are certain rules coming with certain consonants and I think she did a pretty good job explaining these rules and the second YouTube channel that I recommend is called You Study Spanish so for this channel I recommend it as a resource to learn pronunciation and vocabulary so in lesson 83 which I will definitely leave the link down below it teaches you the basic rules to place the stress on the right syllable in a word and about the vocabulary part on this channel I will leave it till the vocabulary part and now let's move on to the second part which is dictionary of course it's one of the most basic resources that you need if you are studying a foreign language so I've got four dictionaries here you probably know all of these already but I just want to go through this really fast the first one is probably the most popular one Spanish Dict so it translates between Spanish and English it's got its own app which you can download from the app store and the second one is called word reference and I think this one has got more than English you can actually choose the language that we wish this word to be translated into the first two are just normal dictionaries they give you all the meanings as well as examples and phrases that go with this word and then the third one is called reversal context which is between Spanish and many other languages there were tons of options so for reversal context it doesn't really give you all the meanings of a word what it does is that it gives you a context of how the specific word that you are looking for is used so it's got a lot of examples in Spanish and then it has the English translation so it's a great way for you to learn how this word can be used and the fourth one is called ling lingui so basically it gives you very simple meaning of the word but the best part and it's my favorite part of this dictionary is that it has this part called external sources so you can compare the translation between Spanish and English and before we move on to vocabulary grammar and listening reading I've got a too good to be true website which encompasses pretty much everything you need I mentioned this website last time in my um, first Spanish video but I didn't really dive into it that by the way its name is Profe de Eli so the best part of this website for you guys is that it categorizes all its contents based on different levels so here if you are an A1 level you can actually just click on A1 and all the contents for A1 learners from alphabets to basic vocabularies to basic grammars so for most of the contents here they have a video explaining the grammar points or explaining the vocabulary and down below it there are exercises or little activities they can use I think it's pretty awesome and tells you if you are correct or wrong and this is a website that works actually for all level and it covers almost everything in my opinion so check this website out it can be really helpful all right so let's move on to the vocabulary part which is part number three I've got three major ways here for you to learn vocabulary as a beginner. It depends on what kind of learner you are, you can choose the best way for you to learn. 
So the first way is just to go through the vocabulary list. First resource I'm gonna recommend to you guys is actually like an official vocabulary list from El Instituto de Fantes. On their website, they've listed out all the vocabularies that a learner on this level should know. So from A1 to C2, they've got a general vocabulary list. I'll leave the link below as well, and you can download the PDF version of all these vocabulary lists. But the downside of it is that it doesn't come with English translations. So you have to search for all the words that you don't know on the dictionary one by one. But for me personally, I'm not a big fan of learning vocabulary this way, especially in the beginning, because I think when we first start to learn a language, we're like babies, we're like kids. We need something, we need an image. It, it works the best if there comes with image and if there comes with audio, which is why I'm recommending you guys for Instagram accounts. I know most of you guys don't really use Instagram for study. What I love about learning vocabularies from the Instagram accounts is that they always have very cute illustration, just very vivid, and I think the image just sort of stimulates our mind better. So the first account is called Lulu Maria Fun Spanish. Another one is called Learn Spanish in Dublin. And the third one is Hard Spanish English. Uh, and the last one is called Spanish Teacher Barcelona. I like this account a lot because not only does it have cute illustrations of words in category, but the teacher herself actually, she sometimes does um, Instagram reels, sometimes she does Instagram live in which she explains some grammar and she also incorporates exercise in her posts. So I think it can be a good way to start. Coming next is two YouTube channels. So I've mentioned one of these already, it's called You Study Spanish. You can just leave it in the background and just play it while you are doing cleaning or cooking. So for You Study Spanish, they have illustration as well, not as cute as the ones on the Instagram accounts, but you can tell the people are happy or sad or angry. And then the second channel that I recommend is called Tu Escuela de Español. This one is slightly fancier than you study Spanish. It incorporates some very simple sentences as well. So I think it can be very helpful. So for the Instagram accounts and the YouTube channels that I recommend, they pretty much cover all the most common words in Spanish. And you can just write down the words that you don't know and create your own 1,000 most used Spanish words by yourself. We are moving really fast. So now let's take a look at the grammar part. For grammar, I will recommend books and podcasts for you guys. Personally, I used this podcast before. It's called Coffee Break Spanish, but now it's changed its name to Coffee Break Academy. They have four seasons. I purchased from one to four, I think, as a bundle because it was cheaper, I remember. But my genuine recommendation for you guys is that if you're just starting out and if you speak very good English, you can consider buying the first two seasons of this podcast. All the podcasts also come with PDF. You can download the PDF. It's got all the transcript and all the grammar points. So you have something to refer to without going back and forth in the podcast. The reason why I recommend you guys first two seasons is because the first two seasons covered all the grammar. By the time that you reach season three, I don't think you need season three anymore. The world is yours, okay? The advantage of a podcast is that you can listen to it when you are working, when you are commuting. It explains the grammar points pretty clearly. So I highly recommend this one if you have the budget. And then grammar books. This is the book that I use. I got it from Amazon and I think my friend um, use a grammar book called Gramática de Uso de Español. Honestly, I think it doesn't matter which grammar book you choose. The important thing is you have one. Why is it important? Because it has a menu. And whenever you have questions, you know where to go to. A grammar book goes a long way. So the book that I use has English explanation, but the one that my friends use only has Spanish explanation. But anyways, just pick one. It doesn't matter that much. All it provides is just um, it's just a structure. Don't expect too much from a grammar book. 
but at the same time, it's something essential. Yes, we are at the last section, which is listening and reading. I combine these two parts together because I think at the beginner level, these two parts are intertwined. It's best if you can find something that can both help with your listening and your reading. Got four websites here. So the first website is called Afa Kultura. For this website, as you can tell from the name, it has more to do with culture. It's really a shame that I came across this website only when I did research for this video. I could have used this website along the way. It's so good. Basically, it has texts, which is reading material for the text part. The website categorizes the contents based on topics or subjects like movie, culture, literature. So under each subject, it has level A, level B, and level C. And you can just read the text that suits your level. So as you read through the text, you will see that there are numbers marked next to some of the words that you may not know. If you scroll up to the very top of the text, you're gonna see this glossary part. It comes with different languages as well. So English is the first one. If you click on that, there will be definition of the words that have been marked. So for the multimedia part, like the videos, it has A1, A2, B1, and B2. If you guys see this, you're going to be so thrilled. Like for A1, it really includes very simple daily conversations in which native speakers talk and every video is like a short play. So it provides you with a context. This is just perfect. And now let's move on to the second one. The second one is called lingua.com. So it has three parts. It has reading, listening, and dictation. How great is that? And under each category, it categorizes the contents based on the levels. And every text is very, very short. You'll be finishing it before you lose your confidence or patience. The listening part is more or less the same. It's just um, an audio and several questions. I don't think they come with transcripts. I love the dictation part. This is actually where you can practice spelling a little bit. The audio is really, really, really slow. So as long as you don't type like flash, there is enough time for you to do dictation practice. It doesn't have that much content on the website. So maybe you want to start here and then you can just tell your friends, oh, we finish everything on this website. And now let's move on to some kids story. Personally, I really think that even for us adults, when we learn a language, we're just like kids. So I think it's best that we start with something for kids. Um, this coming website is called The Spanish Experiment. One thing I love about this website is that it comes with audio. So you can play the audio, you can listen to the story. Deja que te cuente una historia sobre un pollito. Su nombre es Pollito Tito. And another great feature is that there are English translations here below each paragraph. So you can also use this as a resource to practice writing. I mean, after reading the story, you can just click on translation and you read the English part first and see how much you can get it right in Spanish. And the last website is called Mundo Primaria. So the good thing about this website is that there are tons of stories for you to read. It also comes with audio and I think it comes with video too, does it? Yeah, I think it does. Wow. Vivía en un lejano país una niña, la más preciosa que jamás se había visto. Era conocida como Caperucita Roja. Alright, so I think that's a wrap. If you have any good resources that you've used or you know, please share them in the comments down below so that we can all learn about it. And I genuinely think I've picked some of the best resources <laughs> for you guys. So have fun studying Spanish and I hope all these resources can make your life a little bit easier. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!